three run, Whiskey Six Lima Golf, W six LG. Whiskey Six Lima Golf, QRZ Europe. Hi, this is Jim W six LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. A uh, few folks have asked if they could see some details of my station, so decided to do that today. Um, it's, it looks more complicated than it really is. Its basic components are uh, uh, things that a lot of guys have. This is my power supply, which is an Astron 70 amp. Um, it's way bigger than it needs to be, but was able to buy one at a reasonable price, so that's what I ended up with. So that powers all of the 12 volt or 13.8 volt. Uh, parts of the station. I have two Elecraft K3s uh, that are side by side. One on the left is for CW and uh, data. The one on the right is for SSB and frankly the one I use most of the time. Um, the uh, I'm going to turn it on because in a minute I'm going to do a, a, a little demonstration. The cable in between is used to uh, record uh, onto my cell phone from the uh, line out at the back of the K3 on the right. To the left of both of the K3s is an Elecraft P3 pan adapter. It's a really handy device. It has a transmit monitor built into it so I can look at the transmit audio and um, see if, uh, if it uh, is doing everything like it's supposed to do, that it's linear. And it, um, you can pick how much of the band that you're looking at. I think I've got it set up right now for 200 kilohertz. Uh, the two speakers are old Drake speakers, MS4. I've replaced the speakers inside and put um, uh, sound absorbing material behind the speakers. <clears throat> Above the um, uh, Drake MN2000 antenna tuner that uh, I frankly don't use at this time is um, two, uh, rather R2 watt meters. Uh, both of them peak reading digital types. Uh, they're kind of in my field of view and I'm looking at the transceivers so that if something goes wrong uh, I know it right away because they'll indicate that the output has dropped. Uh, both of them have alarms built in for high SWR also. Above the uh, LP100A is an amp keyer switch which basically keys the two amplifiers that I have. Instead of having the transceiver key them the uh, that amp switch does. The Radio Shack speaker control is just that. I uh, bought it at a, a thrift store and it allows me to pick receiver number one or receiver number two to feed the, uh, the two speakers. Um, the microphone laying down, and it's normally not like that but I just had to move it out of the way. That's old, then an old Astatic 10DA that I've had that, uh, that kind of microphone since the, uh, the mid-1960s. That looks like a Drake L4B, and in fact, it partially is, but it partially isn't. And in a minute, I'll take the cover off. Those are two keyboards. I use uh, two computers for logging, and um, uh, not much of my log right now, but I'll turn that on in a minute. Also, I use that f as a uh, spectrum analyzer. Um, and uh, th there, the problem with having the monitors high is I'm looking up at them a lot and uh, that's not easy on on my neck. That's a Nye Viking antenna tuner. It's um, all the power from the station at the at this time goes through that antenna tuner because of the system that I use for uh, for antennas. Uh, that's a homemade antenna tuner box. Um, antenna number one is the knob on the left. Antenna number two is the knob on the right. So that controls the um, the tuning to two Yagis that are side by side. To match them, or to see if they're getting the same power, I have two watt meters in the line, in the lines to each of the antennas, and I balance out the power going to each of the antennas using that antenna tuner. So if I'm running, for example, a kilowatt out, I want each antenna to get about uh, 500 watts. <clears throat> Doesn't need to be precise, just uh, sort of in the in the ballpark. Um, that's an, uh, an Alicraft KP500, which is a 500 watt amplifier. And my homemade amplifier, again, is this modified Drake L4B. I'm going to take the um, sign off the top that, has my, uh, that was given to me by A71AM, take my call sign thing off the top, and I'll uh, 
remove the covers and we can look inside and see what uh, what I built. Um, you can see the um, uh, spectrum analyzer running. That's an SDR receiver connected to the back of the K3 and uh, using HD-SDR to generate uh, the display on the uh, on the screen. The box on the right is the same size as the box on the left. The box on the right is actually the rem remnants of an RF deck uh, for an L4B and I used two Peter Dahl transformers in series parallel on the um, on the inside of course and they provide series parallel they provide um, upwards of 3000 volts under load that's a vacuum relay to um, turn all that stuff on and then there are other relays and timer circuits to control when I can transmit uh, the tubes need the tube rather needs to warm up uh, for about two minutes before you transmit into it so those relays control that so I can't transmit or key the uh, key the linear until the timer allows that to happen that's the RF deck you can see the large tube on the left that's a Russian GS 35B it's a triode uh, it likes about 3000 volts the box um, is uh, an air plenum. The blower on the mount now mounted on the back blows into that plenum. It goes underneath the chassis, comes up through the bottom of the tube. Yeah, those some of the components inside the amp are Russian. Those are Russian doorknob capacitors. That's a vacuum relay, to, uh, changeover relay to um, to uh, move the antenna connection uh, when I go to transmit. Variac on the back controls the filament voltage to the GS35B. Needs to be really right on its rated voltage. The uh, tank circuit and the tank coil remained pretty much unchanged. And um, what I'm going to do is put the covers back on and turn on the amplifier in the low voltage position. And that'll, once the, um, uh, and it has been turned on here, once the voltage comes up, uh, rather once the timer signals for the voltage to come up, it'll be about 2,500 volts no load and about 2,200 <coughs> excuse me 2,200 volts um, loaded or drawing current um, and again it takes about two minutes there's my sign again and behind that are three rotator controls I have three relatively short towers with uh, different Yagis two on the right are 20 meter Yagis at this m at that time they're both pointed to the same direction the light on the um, and the, that box is uh, controls different antennas. Uh, that box controls uh, something I've got sitting on the floor right now, and I'll pan down and show you. Uh, those are delay lines, so I use vacuum relays. I can select different lengths of coax to one of the Aggies to delay it just a bit. So I'm um, going to turn up the the drive on the K3 to somewhere near 100 watts to drive the amplifier. At the time of this recording, it's frankly way early in the morning, like 4 o'clock in the morning. 20 meters is absolutely dead. I did check the band. There was nobody on. So I can transmit and not worry about interfering with someone. Um, so there's the plate voltage meter, yeah, the plate voltage meter on the power supply. And um, I'm going to key the, uh, or put drive into the RF deck. Uh, you can see I can dial up 100 watts and we'll see how much grid current there is and how much play current there is uh, and then the watt meter will indicate how much output I have. Now I've already tuned the amps so uh, it's basically tuned up for 20 meters already uh, for maximum out. From actually for maximal linearity I'm not tuned for max out I went beyond max out uh, loaded it more heavily so I've reduced the output just a bit but it's um, as near as I can tell it's more uh, more linear so I'm keying it now in the low voltage position there's roughly a thousand watts with about a one and a half to one SWR which I could dial down just a bit by um, adjusting the antenna tuner I'm going to um, push the red rocker switch and increase the plate voltage from um, about 2200 under load to about 3000 volts under load uh, and I'll keep the drive at uh, at about 100 watts and the um, and there's the 2200 volts uh, loaded um, once I hit the switch it'll go to 3000 volts uh, loaded 
and I'm doing that there, the red switch. And there's about 3 kV. The um, play current will be almost an amp with 100 watts of drive, um, which is indicated on the uh, L4B. The output is about 1300 watts with a one and a half, again, a one and a half to one SWR. Not a huge increase in power. Um, I think it's a little more linear with with the higher voltage, so I tend to run it with the uh, 3000 volts on it. Um, grid current tends to run, uh, actually when I have it tuned up for max output, the grid current's a little bit less than 300 mils, and there you can see almost an amp uh, uh, with it keyed at at uh, 100 watts of drive. So it gives me 1300 watts output which is near legal limit. There's no difference between 1300 watts and 1500 watts output. The amplifier because of the way I built it can run 1500 watts um, or 1300 watts for that matter uh, forever. It, it just perks along so in an RTTY contest uh, it has no issues. So that's my station W6LG and um, it's uh, been fun to show it to you. Thanks for stopping by and see you the next time. W6LG, thanks.